Amen. Let's just give God a hand of praise. Amen. He's still God. He still reigns. He's still on the throne. Amen. We will not allow technical difficulties to stop our praise and to stop our worship. Amen. So let's just give God a hand of praise. As you are sitting, maybe in your bedroom, at your kitchen table, in your living rooms, give God praise this morning. Amen. You have life. You are amongst the living in this in this pandemic, God has seen you through, and we just want to give him the praise and the honor. We welcome you this morning. We welcome all of our members, amen, to service and to our visitors and friends from across the globe. We just want to welcome you, and we want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers of the world, amen. What an awesome day it is as we honor you. You know, motherhood has changed and evolved, and during this pandemic, during this time that we are facing, mothers have taken on extra roles, amen. Schools have been closed. Mothers are now teachers, mentors, summer camp coordinators. Things have really changed. But God honors you this morning. God loves you. And God wants you to know that he is watching over you during this time. So we want to wish all of our mothers happy Mother's Day to to those of us have, whose mothers have transitioned and are gone, we want to wish you a happy Mother's Day, too. You know, it's tough when we celebrate moms and our moms aren't around. Uh, our moms have gone on, but we want to thank you. I want to just say to my aunts, I have two uh, living aunts, Aunt Jean and Aunt Teresa, who's all one in, all the way in St. Lucia and one who's in Lorraine, Ohio. Happy Mother's Day to you. We just want to love up on you, and we just want, want to bless the women of God. Amen? Amen. So as we go to the Word of God, I will not be before you long. Amen. Just want to share what uh, some of the things God has been saying during, during, to me during this time. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Our world has changed. I mean, it has literally been turned upside down with this coronavirus, and um, I know when it when it first, when we first heard the news about it, I, I personally didn't take it that seriously. I thought it was something going on over in China, and they were dealing with it, and it would be good. You know, everything would be fine. But that that thing began to come across the shorelines and began to hit every continent and began to hit the globe, and it became a vicious, violent virus that has taken out, and that has affected millions of people and has taken out loved ones taking out family and friends, and what makes it even worse is that we can't even be with our loved ones in the hospital, whether they're dealing with the virus, whether they're dealing with an illness, that people are passing and, le and leaving this earth alone. And so, you know, it brings a whole new dynamic to what life used to be like. And because of, of the lackadaisicalness of our government, we find ourselves in this pandemic where we've had to shut it down, where we've had to social distance ourselves from one another, where we can't even go over and really hug mom. I mean, how crazy is that, that we can't gather to celebrate mom in this, on this day? But thank God for social media, man. And thank him for Zoom. Thank him for FaceTime that we can reach out in other ways and express our love. But I'm not here to really um, debate and talk about why the pandemic started, how it started, why God hasn't intervened, or, or what's going on with it. I just want to just kind of reflect on the word of the Lord that has been coming through this house before the pandemic. So last year, Pastor challenged us with, um, to, to just really begin to go into a season of prayer. And he walked us through Second Chronicles. He walked us through the passages. He began to talk about what we needed to do as a church, how we needed to be, be um, praying as, as, as we were getting ready to cross into this new millennium, this new age. And when, when we crossed over, we were excited. 2020 is here. This is what we're going to do for you, God. These are the things that we, we want to do. These are the things that we want to accomplish. But, Father God, we're going to seek your face first. We're going to humble ourselves. We're going to turn from our wicked ways. God, we want to do this thing right. And as we, as we stepped into this new year, around the 24, uh, in February 1st, we began the 24-hour, 24 24-day 24 prayer. And many of you know we were all excited. We were signing up. We had the sheets 
out, and we were going to attack this thing, amen. We were going to attack the enemy through prayer. We were going to attack what God was calling us to do through prayer. To, through prayer. And many of you signed up, and, and that Sunday before, there were a lot of missing spots um, on the sheets. And so we were meeting as elders, and we began to discuss how we were going to do a 24-hour prayer without the numbers of people that we needed. So I said, well, I'll just sign up and I'll just pray every day. You know, just give me, give me some hours. So we all sat in there and we began to just fill in the blanks because we wanted to be diligent in what God was calling us to do. And so as we begin the prayer, let me tell you, that thing got tough. It, it got rough. For me personally, um, I took the 3 o'clock hour because normally that's when God speaks to me. Normally that's when I wake up, and those, that's my intimate time with God. And um, that first day was kind of rough. I don't know why, because usually I'm up at that time and I'm praying, but I pushed through. And then I had several times throughout the day to begin to pray. And this is how the enemy works. Is I begin to pray things began to happen in my life that I had not seen coming. And I was being going through some very challenging things over at the academy. I began going through challenging things in my life, and, and I'm pulling off of what I know to do because I'm an intercessor. I'm a prayer warrior, so I knew what to do. And one day, one night as I was sitting there praying, I just didn't feel the presence of God. And I'm like, God, you know, I'm following this formula that I have mapped out the things that I know that can invoke the presence of God. And God began to speak to me, and he says, I don't want your old prayers. I don't want your old ways. You see, God has walked me through some tremendous, tremendous victories, some tremendous miraculous healings. He's done things for me. And so I was depending on what I knew to get me through these 24 days of 24 hours prayer. And God spoke to me and said, I'm not asking you to repeat what you already know and what you already done. I want to take you to a new level. I want to take you higher in me. And I have been struggling with my relationship with God because I was feeling like, God, I just want to get back to that place where I was. But God was saying, in this season, I want to change you. In this season, I want to elevate you. So I believe that through this virus, God is waking up his church and saying, I want to do something different. And in order, for us, in order for him to do something different, he has to grab our attention. And I can say, and you can say, that he has our attention through this virus, amen? He has our attention through this pandemic. And it's important for us not to get so caught up in what is going on in the world. In the world. I mean, we see it in the grocery stores. We see it um, um, all over the place where there is just a lack. I mean, we live in America, the land of plenty. They are plowing fields because, because the farmers aren't there, that they can't bring in the crops. We see empty shells. We see people hoarding. We see all these things. We see our rent being due and the money not being there. We, we're waiting on stimulus checks and we're waiting on this. And many of us have been uh, either laid off from our job or our hours have been cut. And so that, that's what the enemy wants us to get scared. He wants to cause fear to come in us. But I'm here to tell you today that God is still in control. Amen. He is still on the throne and he reigns forever and ever. So as we get ready to just move into this next season, and I'm excited about what God has. I'm excited for what God is teaching us. So if you have not spent the time in prayer, if you are not looking at this pandemic through spiritual eyes and asking God, God, what are you saying? This morning, I just want to share with you a few things that God has just brought to my attention during this. So as we, uh, as, as I said, as I, you know, get up and I'm, I'm dealing with, you know, hearing all the news and praying and trying to, trying to stay focused. And as Pastor and I would go on walks, you know, and we would begin talking about what was going on. And the Lord would just remind me of the Israelites, remind me of the plagues, because people are tripping about the virus. What's going on? Is it the end of the world? And I was thinking to myself, well, the Israelites had to go through 10 plagues. There are there are tragedies in the Bible over and over. And I began to just think about 
all of the, the, the great biblical figures in the Bible that had to go into quarantine. The first people that went into quarantine were Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were quarantined from the Garden of Eden because of their sins. Noah was quarantined to an ark. David was quarantined to the cave of, the, of Adullam. Abraham was quarantined from the land of Ur. God told him to move his family from his homeland. Jacob was quarantined to his uncle's house. Esther was quarantined to the palace. The Israelites were quarantined from Egypt. They had to go to Canaan. The apostle Paul was quarantined in prison. And John the Baptist was quarantined on the Isle of Patmos. Even Jesus was quarantined for three days on a cross and in a grave. Amen? So it seems to me that this quarantine is a tool that God uses when he's getting ready to shift, when he's getting ready to move, when he's getting ready to reveal and take us to the next level. So don't panic about the quarantine, amen? It means that God is ready to take you to the next level, that God has found favor in you and he wants to use you in the next season. But in that next season, we've got to walk in obedience, we've got to use godly wisdom, and we've got to make better choices. So this morning, what God has showed me is that uh, as we walk through this, we can't return back to church, amen, with that same old praise, with our same old actions, doing the same things that we were doing before. Those things are good. God told me, he says, your praise and your worship is good to me. What you did is good. But I'm calling for something else. I want to elevate you. And you can't carry your past into your future. Yes, I want you to praise me. Yes, I want to have those intimate times with you. But I can't have you every time trying to push into my presence with an old praise, with an old miracle, with something that, that used to be. God says, I'm doing a new thing. I want to give you new blessings and new revelations. I want to take you to that next level. So as we seek to get to the place of God, to where God wants us, we have got to understand that we have got to humble ourselves. Amen? We have got to release the things of the past and move forward with diligence. So one of my favorite, favorite scriptures in the, in, um, has always been Romans 12, 1 through 3. Romans 12 one through three. I love this, this, this uh, passage of scripture because anytime I find myself stagnant, anytime I find myself needing to be rejuvenated, I refer to this scripture in Romans 12 and 123. And I like it to read it in the King James Version because that's how long I've been, um, I memorized it and that's, that's how I learned it through the King James Version. And it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think so highly of themselves, not that, not that they ought not think highly of themselves, but to think soberly according to God, which has dealt with every man who has dealt man a measure of faith. Amen? Amen? So what God is saying in this scripture is that you know, we get comfortable in, in, in who we are. We get comfortable in our positions. We become comfortable as a church. And this pandemic has not only called, caught the world system off guard, our, our financial institutions off guard, but it's caught the church off guard. And the reason it's caught us off guard is because we're too busy having church and not worshiping the one and true God in our in our, our um 
thinking, we think that coming to church, having good church, singing good songs, having great worship, having great outreaches is what God is calling for. But what God is calling for and what Jesus died on that Christ was for souls to be saved. Amen. It was for us to get out and evangelize the world. It was for us to get out and become doers of the word. And so when you look at this passage of scripture, I want to intertwine it with a scripture that is befitting for Mother's Day. And so I want to talk about this young lady, this young girl, this child named Mary, the mother of Jesus. So in Luke in chapter 1, verses 30, it says, In the sixth month, the angel of God was, was sent from God, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this was. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and and the Lord God will give him of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And so here we have this young child, probably just a preteen, uh, who gets this visitation from the Lord. And so I want to intertwine this with the Roman passage because the passage goes on to, Mary goes on to question like, me? I haven't even been with a man. How How is this possible? And she begins to, to converse with the angel and ask him, how is this going to happen? And as he explained it to her, uh, she, she began to understand that this, this, this thing was real, that the angel was real, that this was God speaking to her. And so her service to God was to allow God to impregnate her with the Christ child. Mary was not conformed to the world. Mary wasn't concerned about what the world was going to say or what the world was going to, 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 to think about her. But her mind was transformed and she knew and was honored that God had chose her. And she wanted to prove to the world what the good, acceptable will of God was. So she stepped out of her flesh and went into her and went into obedience, doing what God had called her to do. Now, you know that this, this I can't, we don't have the time to go into the depth of, of, of what all the things that occurred. But one thing I want you to know is that immediately after she meets with Gabriel, God quarantines her to her cousin Elizabeth's house. Because anytime God is about to make a move, he removes the subject out of the situation so that he can spend time alone with them, so that he can spend that he can talk to them so that he can work with them so that when the the blessing comes forth that it won't be tainted. And so church, I believe the reason that we are in the situation we are in now is because God wants to elevate his church. God is preparing us for the manifestation of himself in and through the church. We are pregnant, whether you're male, whether you're female, if you have invited the Lord God Almighty, into your heart. You are pregnant with vision. You are pregnant with purpose. You are pregnant with destiny. And we've got to understand that coming to church and doing our church duties and and doing all those things, that's pleasing to God. But is it the perfect will of God for your life? Is it what he has assigned for you to accomplish? So, We've got to be cognizant of the fact that, yeah, okay, I sing on the praise team, or I worship, or, or, or I'm an usher, or I, I work in, uh, I'm, I'm part of the staff, but is that all God has called you to do and be? Uh, no, it is not. God has specifically whispered in your ear 
your purposes, the dreams, the visions that you have. God is ready to birth those things. So we have to prepare ourselves as a church, as a people, to get ready for the next move of God. Because God is calling his church out of this, out of this slave-like mentality, out of this oppressive situation that we've had to live in. Just like the, the Israelites, God said, I'm going to I'm going to loose the chains that bind you. I'm going to free you up. So while I was in seminary, and I do hope to get back there, one of the papers that I had to write on was a paper on the uh, early church, the ancient early churches. Um, I had to study its history. I had to study its uh, cultural background, its location. Uh, It was a very in-depth study, and I just honestly could not understand why in the world um, do these people have me going through scrobes and digging through tombs and, and going into the library and just digging up all these old manuscripts. It just wasn't clicking to me. I'm like, so what does this have to do with anything? But as I begin to, to um, ingest what, uh, what I was studying, uh, I studied all the seven churches that are mentioned in Revelations. And so I want to talk about one church that I think kind of mirrors where we're at today. And that's the church of Laodicea. In Revelations 3 and 20, uh, it says, so Laodicea, let me just give you a little history. Laodicea was a, a, a beautiful city, and it, it laid in the Lycus Valley. And it, it kind of reminds me of the Rocky Mountains because it was surrounded by mountains. And just like right now, how the spring is melting the, so, the snow, so all this cold water would rush down into the valley of Lycus, and it would pool there. And just like our mountains, it also had hot springs. And the hot springs would pool, and at one juncture they came together and and caused the water to become lukewarm and so the angel of God comes to address the church as I believe the angel of God is addressing the churches today and he says to the church of Laodicea he says you're neither cold nor hot you have taken on the environment in which you live you're, 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 you're lukewarm, and, and I, I'm about to spew you out of my mouth. You're supposed to be on fire for God, amen? You're supposed to be moving the church forward. But when I come, there's a lackadaisical attitude. And God says, this is not what I called, called you to do. And he's trying to ignite them and get them to move into purpose. But as you drop down into that, same passage, that same um, angel is addressing the church of Laodicea, and he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in, to, come in and eat with him and he with me. The one that conquers, I will greet, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne. I will also conquer and sit with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Church, we have got to come to the fruition that God has been knocking at our doors. Amen. God has been continually knocking and trying to get our attention. And now we have a pandemic to where he says, you know, I'm going to hit the reset button and I'm going to stop everything because I need to get my creation, my earth, my people back on track. And so, um, He is knocking on the door. Now, this passage is written in the continuance tense. The continuance tense shows an action that that is, was, or will be, or is in progress. So God is continuing knocking. He was knocking in the ancient churches. He was knocking throughout the Old Testament. He's knocking in the New Testament. He's knocking in this postmortem, postmodern season. God is knocking in this 20th century. He is knocking on the door. And it's like we are so busy having church that we don't hear the knock of God, that God is standing outside, he's knocking, and we're so busy doing us that we do not hear what God is calling us to do. We have got to wake up and open the door. Amen. We've got to wake up and understand that when this new season comes, God might ask you to shift 
okay? God might ask you to, to do something different. We get so complacent in, what, in the things that we do for God that we don't even make room for others to come in because we are placeholders and, and we become territorial. But God says, I don't want that in my house. He says, I'm coming to do a new thing. And so this means that as we move forward, Amen. As they lift the ban, as they, they tell us to, that we can gather again, that when we walk in here, I am literally expecting babies to leap in stomachs. Amen. I'm literally expecting how Elizabeth, when she saw Mary, that the womb, her womb jumped. I'm expecting that God has spoken to you and that you're eager to share what he's done for you, what he's telling you to do during this time. I, I, I'm, I'm eager to see what next looks like, amen, because the old is gone, amen. The world has changed forever, and God is saying through this pandemic, I want to elevate you. I want to be with you. Don't worry about what's going on. Get into my presence. Open the door. Amen. Open the door and sit down and sup with him. He has invited you to the table. He has invited you to learn, to, to, to have a restart, to reboot, and to, co and to go forward. So um, as, as we... As we press through all of this, and as we continue to go through this pandemic, I just pray that we will really open up our hearts to what God says. Amen. That we will be a different people. Lord, please make us different, Father God. Give us the tenacity to walk through the hard times. If that means we've got to go back and we've got to have conversations or whatever we need to do to release our past, so that we can move forward in God. God doesn't want our old worship, amen? God doesn't want, he doesn't need the things of the past to do the things that he wants to do new in us. So as we get ready to move forward, allow his precious Holy Spirit to speak with us. Just, just in, the, in the middle of the night, just get up. You know, and there are times when I get up and it's chirp, chirp. I don't hear the Lord. I'm like, you know, I could, I'm going back to bed. You know, but there's times where I press through and say, okay, God, I need to close my mind. I need to, to quit dealing with, with things that are blocking me from you. And I put on worship music, and I just, I just lay in his presence. God's not asking you about your problems. He doesn't want to spend time with you going up over what someone did to you, how you were hurt. how this. He already died on the cross for that. God's saying, I want to do something new in you and through you. So God is reshaping the culture of the church. I believe that he's reshaping us and he's preparing us for what is next. I have no idea what next looks like, but I'm excited to know that God has chosen me to be a part, a vital part of his plans. And I hope that you are excited about what God is going to do. With you. So church, we can't sit here and wait on our government. We can't sit around and, 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 and wait on stimulus checks and, and wait on this and that. If God is concerned with the birds and the lilies of the field, he is concerned with you. He will take care of you. His promises are true. We have to activate our faith. Amen? Activate your faith. Yes. Yes. Your rent is due. I get that. I understand that. Yeah, you go to the groceries store and, and there's aisles where there's nothing there. I, I understand that. But who do we serve? How do we activate our faith? You know, our favorite restaurants are closed. We can't get our hair done. We can't get our nails done. You know, the things that we want, the things that we crave, God has taken it all the way down to the bare because he's trying to get our attention. And God says, I am the God of Israel. I am the God of this world. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I hold this world 
in the palm of my hand. We are going to be okay. Amen. We are going to make it through. Yes, it is sad. I have lost friends. I have ha- there are members in this church that have lost family members, but God is still in control. So church, I just want you to know that God is waiting on us. Amen. He's waiting on his children. In Romans 8 and 22, it says, For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves have the first fruits of the Spirit groaning inwardly. So we are eagerly, oh, excuse me. Uh, inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption and the redemption of our bodies. God is speaking to the whole world. The whole world, nature is groaning. People are groaning. The childbirth has begun. Your birthing pains are beginning to increase. Will you open the door and sup with God? So that when you birth your child, you know exactly what's going on and what God has called you to do. We have been quarantined so that we can be the vessels of the next move of God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let us just pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord. For this day, Father God, we thank you, Father, that we can still come, Lord, even, Father God, in these chaotic times and worship you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for the word that we have received, Lord. Father God, as as we move forward as a church, God, we want to do those things that you have promised us, God. But God, because of our lackadaisalness, Father God, because of the comforts of the world, Lord, we have gone astray from what you've called us to do. But Lord, you hit the reset button, God. Amen. You hit the reset button, God. And we thank you, Lord, for your son, Father God, that was quarantined for three days, God, for our sins, for our transgressions, Lord. He did not die, Father God, for us to to bask in the comforts of this world, Lord, but he died so that we might go and save the world. So, Father God, give us an urgency and a seriousness about ministry, Lord, that it's not about our gifts and talents, but it's about going out and saving a sin-sick world so that we can be the light, Father God. Father God, that our passion is hot, that we can move forth, Father God, in all that you've called us to do and become. We love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Father God, take care of us and watch over us as we go through these times and we will begin to praise you even the more in our lack. We will not fear and we will not worry because, God, we know that you have quarantined us for better works. In Jesus' name.